So the aim of the game then is that you're going to interview Chris Harris. If I can get him on here, then I'm going to try my best to. I think he's going to enjoy that. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the fuel factory. Dave's cleaning his wheels, which can only mean one thing. We're <laughs> off to another car show, aren't we, mate? We certainly are, mate. Collecting cars, coffee morning down at Triumph in Hinkley. Dave claims he's going to interview Chris Harris today, and uh, we're going to see how that works out for him. I'm going to get him, mate. <laughs> Chris, good, good, thank you. Nice to meet you, mate. Right, it's happened. He it's has happened. managed to I call up into him, Chris Harris. God. He's turned up in a diesel red TT <laughs> that's got more interior lightning than a GT3 RS, <laughs> and it's probably got 200 horsepower. So I like this man because he's ironic. <laughs> go on, then ask me one question before I go and get a cup of coffee. Another one. One car for the rest of your life. What would it be? Okay, it has to be a road car. Okay, that changes on a daily basis. You understand the whole point of being obsessed, like we are. That has to change on a daily basis. Some days you have an F40 day, some days you have a, a, a 288 GTO day, sometimes you have a 2.7 RS day. Right now, I probably have a 911 GT3 Touring 991. Lucky enough to say I've got one. <laughs> uh, by the way, because I'm plugging, because these boys are in it, we're here at Collecting Cars. That, that is going to put they're going to put this up on the screen now at Collecting Cars. It's our uh, it's a copy meet here. Online auctions videos, everything. Not as good as these videos, but sort of this, right? <laughs> right, that happened a bit quicker than I thought it was going to do, mate. We've only been here five minutes. Literally five minutes. I'm not going to lie. I bottled it. <laughs> Completely bottled it, mate. Oh, Chris Harris! Well, can I ask you a question? I've still got my hands in my pockets now, mate. Let's so, go and get a brew. Yeah, let's go and get a brew. Is this what I think it is? This is the Gobstopper, mate. The <laughs> one and only legendary Gobstopper. Legendary name in the back window as well. YouTube search, Roger Clark Gobstopper. Absolute Look at animal. This. Look at the size of that turbo, mate. So we've just bumped into Ollie Clark from Roger Clark Motorsport, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about what's inside this car. Ben, sorry to interrupt your morning, but this is the uh, Roger Clark Motorsport Gobstopper, the original Gobstopper one, built in 2006. It's won two Time Attack uh, titles, 2008, 2009, and it's our little shop window. It's our way of sort of demonstrating our Subaru wares but it's also our test bed for uh, building and testing new products. Um, currently we're running, it's a four wheel drive system, running 940 horsepower, um, <laughs> and it puts a massive smile on your face. In the Pro Extreme class that we run, there are no rules, so literally you're given free reign. So we run nitrous, um, there are no rules, as long as the car's safe um, and it passes scrutineering, then you're allowed out on track. So yeah, it's a, it's a lively bit of kick. You've got a sequential gearbox. Um, you've got your dry sump tank under that um, tall carbon cover. You've got your nitrous bottle in the, uh, in the, in the casing there. This one's on air jacks as well, so if you, if you plug a, an airline um, up its backside, the thing will lift itself off the ground. That is boost, which is the happy <laughs> switch. That one gives you miles of smiles. And what gives you even more fun is the nitrous tank. That's the, uh, the gauge for the nitrous. The wheels were made for us by a good friend of ours and a, a, a quite a well-known chap called uh, Matt Neal from Team Dynamics. And you'll see in the rim itself, gobstopper. You can see a fairly integral roll cage which goes to all the suspension pickup points um, to give you the actual strength and rigidity that you need in the chassis. What's fairly unique on on, uh, on this particular gobstopper is the exhaust. We've got actually got a side pipe. You'll see the odd flame every now and then as it uh, spits out the side, it's quite nice. One thing you must do, this is number one. Things got crazier when we bought our number two. Things got out of hand when we bought our number three, but you must come down and see the, those cars as well. See you soon. We'll be there, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers got a massive soft spot for these. British Racing Green, UNOS, V-Special. 
And this one's particularly special because it's running Gen V individual throttle bodies. Look at that motor in there. I bet that sounds absolutely ice. <laughs> Still the best car I've ever driven in one of these. Look at those great big red Ferrari intakes. This is your baby then, mate? Yeah, yeah so it was, yeah, we've not had it long, but it's, yeah, Dodge Hellcat. Um, the guy we bought it off, he was an American car collector. He had this, a Dodge Demon. He had a 1968 Charger. 1970s Chevette, so he's proper oh, into his American mate. stuff. So um, the Demon, like you just said, then the Demon's the one that's got the optional so, yeah. wheels and stuff. Like the it, Demon. Yeah. So this is 707 horsepower. The Demon's 850 horsepower. But for one dollar more, you can buy a crate that has skinny front tyres, a different ECU, and it, then you run it on methanol and on for for the drag strip basically, and then it's a thousand horsepower when you plumb all that in. I didn't realise they were that that different compared mm, to. Yeah, big big uh, big difference. I mean, this was the daddy, and then yeah. they bought out the demon to be the uh, the top of the top. Let's have a look under this bonnet. Apparently, it's the largest supercharger fitted on any production car. But yeah. The bit I like the best is on this side, that is a hole that goes straight into the air intake. On that side, it's a headlight. But oh, right, okay. that's only on the Hellcats and the Demons. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. What a morning. That was a good morning. Absolutely incredible morning. You so come down to collecting cars, coffee meet down at Triumph in Hinkley. You didn't bottle it, did you? Spoke to Chris Harris. God, it stood there all nervous. Well, you say I spoke to Chris Harris. I don't think I actually did. I think I just stood next to him. <laughs> Join us again next time for more nonsense.